Neo-Druidism or Neo-Druidry, commonly referred to as Druidry by many adherents, is a form of modern spirituality or religion that generally promotes harmony and worship of nature and respect for all beings, including the environment. Many forms of modern Druidry are neo-pagan religions, whereas some are instead seen as philosophies that are not necessarily religious in nature. Originating in Britain during the 18th century, Druidry was originally a cultural movement, only gaining religious or spiritual connotations in the 19th century. The core principle of Druidry is respect and veneration of nature, and as such it often involves participation in the environmental movement. Another prominent belief among modern Druids is the veneration of ancestors, particularly those who belong to prehistoric societies. Arising from the 18th century Romanticist movement in Britain, which glorified the ancient Celtic peoples of the Iron Age, the early Druids aimed to imitate the Iron Age priests who were also known as Druids. At the time, little accurate information was known about these ancient priests, and the modern Druidic movement has no direct connection to them. Despite contrary claims made by some modern Druids, in the late 18th century, Modern Druids developed fraternal organizations modeled on Freemasonry that employed the romantic figure of the British Druids and Bards as symbols of indigenous British spirituality. Some of these groups were purely fraternal and cultural, creating traditions from the national imagination of Britain. Others, in the early 20th century, merged with contemporary movements such as the physical cultural movement and naturism. Since the 1980s some modern Druid groups have adopted similar methodologies to those of Celtic Reconstructionist paganism in an effort to create a more historically accurate practice. However, there is still controversy over how much resemblance modern Druidism may or may not have to the Iron Age Druids. Beliefs Neo-Druidic beliefs vary widely, and there is no set dogma or belief system followed by all adherents. Indeed, it is a key component of many Druidic groups that there should not be strict dogmas. There is no central authority over the entire movement, nor any central religious text or religious leader. Core ideas shared by many Druids, according to Emma Restall Law, the founder of the Druid Network, include honoring of the ancestors and honoring of the land. Or also commented that Druidry connects with all the other Earth ancestor traditions around the globe, such as the Native American, the Maori and Huna, the Aboriginal, the Romani, and the indigenous spiritualities of Africa and Asia. A view supported by leading British Druid Philip Cargom. Nature centered spirituality Druidry largely revolves around the veneration of nature. Phil Ryder stated that, within Druidry, nature is considered to be unconditionally sacred and an expression or manifestation of deity and divinity. Many Druids are animists. Most Druids see the aspects of nature as imbued with spirit or soul, whether literally or metaphorically. Some Druids consider animals and plants to be members, like the deities of the Celts, of a Tuath, or tribe and therefore honored. Celtic author J. A. McCulloch wrote of this in depth in a book published in 1911 entitled Religion of the Ancient Celts. Because they view the natural world as sacred, many Druids are involved in environmentalism, thereby acting to protect areas of the natural landscape that are under threat from development or pollution. Theology The theology of the modern Druidic movement is inherently nature-based, equating divinity with the natural world. However, the specifics of Druidry have changed over the centuries. From a God-centered monotheistic tradition to a goddess-centered polytheistic tradition. Since Druidry is very diverse, each of these strands still coexist side by side in the Druid milieu. Monotheism When modern Druidry developed into a religion in Britain during the 18th century, the country was almost entirely Christian, with most of the populace still believing in a monotheistic god. Even by the end of the 19th century, Druidry was still being described as a monotheistic philosophical tradition. But that later changed radically in the 20th century, with the burgeoning growth of the pagan revivalist movement. 
As pagan druids today worship a number of different gods and goddesses, neo-pagan theology and the goddess grant O goddess thy protection and in protection, strength and in strength, understanding and in understanding, knowledge and in knowledge, the knowledge of justice and in the knowledge of justice, the love of it and in the love of it the love of all existences and in the love of all existences, the love of goddess and all goodness, the Druid's Prayer, after Ilo Morganug. Some Druids, such as members of our Andriac Fayan, are polytheists, worshipping many gods and goddesses, who are worthy of respect, love and worship. These deities are commonly taken from historical Celtic polytheism, though can also come from other sources, such as Christianity. The goddess Danu gives her name to the family of Irish deities, which in the Gaelic is the two Atha Dei Acute Danan. With the increase in neo-pagan druidry, and the widespread acceptance of goddess worship, the Druid's Prayer, which had been originally written in the 18th century by Druid Ilo Morganug, had the word God replaced with goddess in common usage although not universally. A middle ground is found in OBOD, where the word spirit is used very frequently. Ancestor veneration respect for the ancestors is another core belief for some druids. The idea of respect for ancestors or ancestor worship is common in pagan folk religions. Revivalists and Reconstructionists agree that knowing as much as possible about the lives of our ancestors and preserving national or tribal heritage is important and good. Archaeological evidence does suggest that the ancient peoples of Britain, Ireland, and other parts of Europe practiced burial customs from which we infer particular respect for ancestors and probably a belief in life after death in some form. The Druids' ancestor veneration generally focuses on the Iron Age Celtic peoples of Western Europe, because these were the peoples among whom the ancient Druids lived. This offers a connection to the Celts through a blood link to a modern Celtic land or merely a sole allegiance. Some Druids, however, particularly those with no ethnic connection, do not emphasize such a Celtic link and focus instead on other historical peoples, such as the Anglo-Saxons or the Norse. Ancestor veneration leads many to object to the archaeological excavation of human remains and their subsequent display in museums. Many have organized campaigns for their reburial. For instance, in 2006, the neo-Druid called Paul Davies requested that the Alexander Calum Museum in Avebury, Wiltshire rebury their human remains, and that storing and displaying them was immoral and disrespectful. Criticism of this view has come from the archaeological community with statements like, no single modern ethnic group or cult should be allowed to appropriate our ancestors for their own agendas. It is for the international scientific community to cure at such remains. Afterlife Emma Restorlaw stated that, there is a general acceptance of reincarnation among druids, and that a soul can reincarnate into other species. However, Orr's claim that this is nearly universal among Druids is not supported, there is no discussion of the afterlife or reincarnation. For example, in the writings of the Reformed Druids of North America, practices, ceremonies the practices of modern Druids typically take place outside, in the daylight, in what is described as the Eye of the Sun. In some cases, they instead perform their rites indoors, or during the night. Most druids perform ceremonies within a circle around an altar or central fire. Neo-druids often meet and practice in groups called variously, groves, or henges. Sometimes they meet at pre-Celtic stone circles and other megaliths which since the Romantic Revival have been associated in the popular imagination with the ancient Druids. At the summer solstice the Neo-Druidic ritual is notably held at Stonehenge in England. Another particularly sacred place is Glastonbury in southern England. In parts of the world beyond the range of the original Celtic tribes in Europe and the pre-Celtic megalithic cultures, Modern Druids seek an understanding of the sacred qualities of landscape and place. When performing rituals, some modern Druids wear ceremonial cloaks and robes, which in some cases imitate the Iron Age style of the Celts. 
In some orders, robes or tabards of different colors are used to indicate the grade of the druid within the order. In the case of the order of bards, ovates and druids, the colors blue, green, and white are respectively assigned to these grades. Some modern druids also use ritual staves, a symbolic magical instrument long associated with both druids and wizards generally. Many modern druids do not adopt any ceremonial garb. In the 1990s and early 2000s, the use of a ritual based on the sweat lodge became increasingly popular among some neo-druids in Ireland and the UK. The sweat lodge is a ceremony common to many indigenous peoples of the Americas. It has been appropriated by some adherents of Neo-Druidism who see sweats as initiatory and regenerative opportunities to rededicate oneself to honoring the earth and the community of life. However, Native Americans who preserve the sweat lodge ceremonies for their communities have protested the appropriation of the ceremony by non-natives. Increasingly so now that people have been injured, and some have died, in fraudulent sweat lodge ceremonies performed by non-natives. Arts and Poetry and Druidry A specific ceremony takes place known as an Ashtathford, which is dedicated to the recitation of poetry and musical performances. Within the Druidic community, Practitioners who are particularly skilled in their recitation of poetry or their performance of music are referred to as bards a term based upon the word bardwa, which the ancient Greek historian Strabo claimed was the term for poets in Iron Age Gaul. Bards perform at Ashtathford at various occasions, from formal rituals to pub get-togethers and summer camps and environmental protests. Instruments commonly used by druidic bards include acoustic stringed instruments like the guitar and the clairsarch, as well as the bodhran, bagpipe rattle, flute and whistle. Academic Graham Harvey believed that these specific instruments were preferred by modern druids because many of them were Irish in origin, and therefore gave a Celtic flavor, seemingly invoking the Iron Age, the period during which the ancient druids lived. Inspiration for poetry and other arts is known as Orn, and is believed to be a flowing spirit given by the goddess which can be invoked by the druid. In many druidic rituals, Orn is invoked by either chanting the word Orn or A-I-O three times. In order to shift the consciousness of the participants involved, druids have participated in other musical genres and with more technological instruments, including the blues and rave music, and one British club, Megatripolis, opened with the performance of a druidic ritual, tree law among many druids. There is a system of tree law, through which different associations are attributed to different species of tree, including particular moods, actions, phases of life, deities and ancestors. Festivals Most adherents of Neo-Druidism observe eight spiritual festivals a year, which are collectively known as the Wheel of the Year. In some cases groups attempt to revive folkloric European festivals and their accompanying traditions. In other cases the rites are modern inventions, inspired by the spirit of what they believe was the religious practice of pre-Roman Britain. Four of these are solar festivals. Being positioned at the solstices and equinoxes, these are largely inspired by Germanic paganism. The other four are the Celtic festivals, the cross-quarter days inspired by modern interpretations of ancient Celtic polytheism. The idea of the Wheel of the Year was introduced into Druidry by Ross Nichols, who founded the Order of Bards, Ovates and Druids in 1964, and he had gained this idea from his friend Gerald Gardner, who had implemented it in his Brickett Wood Coven of Gardnerian which is in 1958.